This is 7 National News and in our top story, Sheikha Lubna bin Khalid al Qasimi, the Minister of Foreign Trade, has stressed on the UAE's keenness to provide assistance to developing countries, especially in Africa. Sheikha Lubna was addressing the NYU Abu Dhabi conference on enhancing economic development through technology, focus on Africa and other developing regions today. The Sheikha highlighted a bid to educate developing countries on modern technology that will allow them to open up to global economies. Lubna stated that the UAE trade with African countries jumped from 1.7 billion dirhams in 2001 to 14.5 billion dirhams in the year 2010. When charity meets students, it's bound to be a fun-filled event. A school for boys in Deira opened its doors to the public today with the hope of spreading happiness and selling items by young entrepreneurs to help those who are in need. According to school officials at the Omar bin Katab Model School, the annual event has been successful in spreading important values among the young students and extending it to the community. Adorned with colorful balloons, the Omar bin al Khattab Model School in Dera is celebrating its annual Sanabal al Khair Festival, an event that started six years ago to benefit the needy. Adding to the excitement among the young students is the arrival of His Highness Sheikh Saeed bin Hamdan bin Rashid al Maktoum. He visited all the shops that the students have put up to raise money for Beit al Khair Society. The aim of the project and the aim of this uh, activity is charitable one, that it uh, helps the students also to be what's so called little merchants. Uh, they give them the chance to have their own shops. Uh, they pay something to the school uh, administration and the rent of this is taken into uh, uh, the charitable societies. There are a variety of products on sale from food items to pets. Game stations are also available. And while the whole week would seem like all fun and games for many of the students, they say it also allows them to take responsibility in making the event a success, from organizing programs to being active on social media. Uh, starting uh, with, uh, with the operations with His Highness Office, um, the final tuning, um, preparing the theater, we do many things. I do, I do many things, uh, me with my friends. The idea was from the school, but they told us you have to think, you have to, to come up with new ideas. In hopes of attracting residents from all age groups to visit the five-day festival, they have everything covered from the UAE's heritage and culture to advancements and developments in technology. Because uh, it's uh, something new and people love la uh, these things, technology, new technology, and it's learned and uh, it's good. The event aims to bring even more visitors until Thursday from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. while the school is educating the children about being socially responsible citizens to capable entrepreneurs, the students hope to teach adults to have fun while doing it. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. The UAE has been billed as the cleanest country in the GCC, according to the World Environmental Performance Index. The survey was carried out by Yale University in collaboration with Columbia University, ranking countries on 22 performance indicators in 10 policy categories. Out of 132 countries, Switzerland topped the poll, followed by Latvia, Norway, Luxembourg and Costa Rica. The UAE came in at the number 77 spot, the best ranking for the country so far, followed by Saudi Arabia 82 for the region. Some of the categories include environmental burden of disease, water and air pollution and their effects on human health as well as ecosystems and also habitat. The chairperson of Emirates Environmental Group, Habiba Al-Marashi, was quoted as saying that the UAE leadership is serious about environmental credentials, adding that all areas are playing a part, including the private and education sector. An award-winning Emirati author will attempt to sign over 1,900 books in just 14 hours, which will guarantee him a place in the Guinness World Records. Case Sedki, who gained worldwide recognition for his unique Japanese manga illustrations and classical Arabic content, will launch his latest novel, Gold Ring 2, on the 1st of March. However, this isn't going to be your average book launch. Sedki is seeking to beat the current world record of 1,951 books signed.
What I'm trying to do is trying to break the world record for number of copies signed. Um, and it's a mammoth task. Um, the current record stands at 1,951. So I'm hoping that, you know, 37 viewers, all 1,952 plus of them uh, show up and make this event a success. Sedki, a father of two, aims to raise the profile of Arabic children's literature locally and internationally through his various publications. This commitment is reflected in the pledge he has made to donate 15% of all sales of his book signing Attempt to Dubai Cares, the UA-based charitable organization that provides children in developing countries with access to quality primary education. The most difficult thing is just the way the record attempt is structured. Um, I know that a lot of people are very supportive and they'd like to do things like, for example, buy multiple copies to make it um, a success. Uh, however, Guinness specifies that it has to be one copy per customer. That's why it's so important for me to reach out and try to get as many people as I can. So please don't show up on your own, you know, bring someone with you. And um, the copies uh, cannot be distributed for free. They need to be purchased um, at the event. Um, another thing is that the signing has to be continuous. So if any break happens in the signing, that's when it's, uh, it's you know, God forbid, declared a failure. Racy enthusiasts experienced something unexpected and different to their usual indoor-outdoor racing track over the weekend. The ice race gave participants seven minutes to test their skills and precision and performance on a frozen surface, while racing with state-of-the-art, specially modified sports carts on the coveted F1 track. Contenders competed for the top prize of a Tagger watch. However, the winner was not decided on finishing position, but rather on their fastest lap. The glamorous part, we have, uh, we have it also because uh, Dubai Mall is the biggest mall in the world. You have people from uh, all over the world coming here. You have all the most beautiful brands you can imagine here. So it's a very glamorous place. So again, it matched very well uh, Tagueyer uh, DNA. And finally, the daringness that you have deeply into Tagueyer, you have it here by making cars racing on ice, which may sound like a crazy uh, idea. So car racing on ice in the desert in Dubai, looks just like crazy, but it's the kind of thing we like very much at Tagueyer. Where every second counts, Tagger, the official timekeeper for Formula One Grand Prix, together with Ahmed Siddiqui and Sons, provided full racing gear, including overalls and helmets, and also a pre-race driver's briefing where the controls of the cart were explained. Regarding the, the turnout we had this year for the ice race was uh, over-expected, and we are planning, hopefully... Uh, if we have any support from any of the brands that we carry and hopefully with Tag Heuer, we will be uh, doing the races on a yearly basis. Uh, again, it all depends on Dubai Mall, which were very helpful this year to, to organize all the race for us. And uh, you never know, maybe next time it will be not on the ice, on something else. So. And finally this evening, Dubai was treated to a taste of Italy on Saturday as models hit the catwalk to celebrate the fashions of Italy in the 60s. La Bella Figura event, the beauty of Italian living, was held at the one and only Royal Mirage, where models were dropped off by speedboat to take to the jetty runway in front of a crowd of Dubai's elite and glamour set. The event was held in collaboration with the Esmod Institute in Dubai, where a host of emerging local talent put their efforts into the Italian designs. So as Dubai's fashion scene continues to evolve, what are the challenges that face the industry? And with London Fashion Week around the corner, how can Dubai's fashion scene and its designers make their mark on the world map? Fashion is really booming, it's moving a lot and we are so happy because uh, finally people are into fashion. I mean, it's not only, fashion is not uh, one occasion, it's not only one uh, show or fashion week or things like that. For me, fashion is a must be um, every day, uh, every occasion and uh, this is where students can be inspired and everybody can be inspired, I mean uh, designers uh, themselves. So uh, Dubai is uh, today really, really amazing. This is why we were 
are very happy also to participate to this event because for me any kind of event where people are expressing themselves and they are showcasing themselves are good. Well it's a brilliant platform because here there's not a huge amount of opportunity for there's not that many fashion shows yes it's fashion week but it's not there's not lots of intimate fashion shows this is just a great opportunity and quite a relaxed surrounding quite a relaxed atmosphere to get some good exposure. And up next we have the day's business news so stay with us.